We got shirts on sale. Express your evolution and starter Pokemon love by buying an evolution family shirt in which one starter shirt? Link will be in the description below. Well, looks like normal types is next. I'm surprised water typing hasn't won yet, considering you guys seem to want that one too. But I guess this guy's comment just came in clutch. Normal Pokemon are interesting though. They're what I consider as the plain Pokemon. I mean, for crying out loud, they are called normal Pokemon for a reason. Now here's the thing too. I don't hate any normal Pokemon, nor do I particularly love any normal types, other than maybe like one or two. So there shouldn't be too much hate in this video. I think my opinions will be pretty normal, no pun intended. Like always, every Pokemon will be given an opinion, all Mega Evolutions and forms included. At the end of the video, be sure to comment what typing you want to see next and whatever typing gets the most upvotes will be next week's typing. Alrighty though, with that being said, let's hop right into my normal opinions. Okay, saying normal opinion sounds funny because I don't actually have any normal Pokemon opinions. So I'm just going to say normal type Pokemon opinions. Alright, let's start now. It's as normal as an opinion is going to get. Pidgey is your basic Route 1 bird. I don't love it, but I don't hate it neither. It's got a cute design though, and it is in my top three favorite Route 1 birds. Who remembers Ash's Pidgeotto? I missed it so much. It was one of my favorite Pokemon owned by Ash because it actually cared for him a lot. I want to use Pidgeotto in competitive too at some point. I love using middle stage Pokemon, and Pidgeotto is definitely one of my favorites. Okay, Pidgeot, I'll be back soon. Or not. Yikes. Yeah, I should have been in his Pidgeot, and to this day, I'm still livid by this. Go back for it, you jerk. Pidgeot is one of my favorite Route 1 birds because of Ash's as well. I love Pidgeot's Mega. No Garden Hurricane is such a deadly combination. Its design also looks like Super Saiyan 3 Goku, which I also really appreciate. Never really been a huge fan of Rattata, and no Joey, your Rattata is not in the top 10% of Rattata. That is a myth. I prefer Alolan Rattata over Cantonian Rattata. I like the dark tipping behind it too, to go with all the bite moves it has. Remember when Ash owned Eradicate for like 10 minutes? Butterfree had abandonment issues, dude. I would never trade Butterfree for Eradicate, but I'm not trying to say that I dislike Eradicate because I actually enjoy its design more than Rattata's. Did a low Eradicate just get its wisdom teeth removed? I don't appreciate its design and it's not adorable at all. I prefer Spearow over Pidgey, but not by much. I hope this doesn't sound bad, but I love how Spearow chased Ash in the first episode. In any way do I not condone violence or hatred towards Ash. I just like the stigma that Pokemon put for Spearow and being a huge jerk. I like it because Pokemon has kept the stigma since the very beginning. I just see Fero as this big bully as well, but once again, I love what Pokemon did and continuing the stigma that it is a jerk for the remainder of the series. I've also used Fero before on a lot of my in-game teams, and I think it's one of the best flying Pokemon you can use, especially in Kanto and Johto. Jigglypuff is adorable in the Pokemon anime, and I love the callback to it in the Sun and Moon anime. I also main Jigglypuff in Smash Melee, even though I'm not that good. I appreciate Wigglytuff because of the Mystery Dungeon series. Shout out to Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky being the best Explorers game ever. Meowth is nearly as iconic as Pikachu at this point. It's a national monument for Team Rocket, and I like Meowth a lot. We have gotten to see his personality over the years and the backstory he's had. I love this dude and feel bad for him at the same time. I appreciate what Meowth has done for the Pokemon anime, and I have to say, thank you. Say hello to my favorite normal Pokemon, Persian. So when I was younger, I had a half moon coon and Persian cat, and it reminded me of Persian a lot. It ran away though, unfortunately. Some people hate Farfetch, but I actually really like it because of the potential it has for a mega or some kind of evolution. Let's give Farfetch some love. I like Dodo, that's a cool concept. I really like riding on Dodrio and Let's Go. It reminded me of that Dario guy from the Pokemon anime when Ash raced against him with Rapidash. No spoilers intended, but my opinion for this Pokemon changed after seeing Detective Pikachu. And I am, uh, quite disturbed. Watch the movie and you will know what I mean. Nurse Joy's assistant and one of the most precious Pokemon. Finding a Chansey is also super rare, and getting a Shiny? I can only imagine what kind of a treat that must be. Kangaskhan is definitely a cool Pokemon, although I have to say it annoys me with how difficult it is to get in the Safari Zone and the Kanto games. I'd also like to know more about the baby it carries around and why it's not its own Pokemon. Mega Kangaskhan is unbelievably broken. Even after Parental Bond was nerfed in Generation 7, it still managed to stay in Ubers. Also, the fact that the baby can come out and attack further proves the point that it should be its own Pokemon and not only be a part of Kangaskhan. I like Tauros, and the fact that I was able to ride them in the Lola games was fantastic. But why in the heck does Ash have 30 though? Is that necessary? Ditto can transform into anything, and I have always loved that concept about this Pokemon. Some of you may be shocked to find out Eevee isn't my favorite normal Pokemon, as I mentioned earlier it was Persian. Eevee is my second favorite normal type Pokemon, and as you all may know, I'm an evolution connoisseur. Eevee is precious and is also precious in Let's Go. Porygon looks like a gobstopper, I think most of us can see that. I also find it funny that Porygon or its evolutions have never been seen again in the Pokemon anime. At least I'm pretty sure they haven't, quote me if I'm wrong. 
Snorlax is one of the most lovable oaf Pokemon ever. It just sits there cute, sleeping. But Snorlax can also be a powerhouse too. That's what I love about it. I think Sentret is one of the cutest Generation 1 rodents. I have a shiny one named Glaze in my Pokemon Moon copy, and I enjoy its shiny form very much. I have the same love for Furret as I do for Sentret. I also love the shiny just as much. I like owls and love how adorable Hoodoot looks. I also like the Glaze looking shiny Furret, as I also have one of those two in Pokemon X and Y. I wish we could have seen more from Ash's Knocked Out because of its shiny form. That was always a cool feature about it. Eaglybuff was also adorable in the Pokemon Mr. Dungeon games. Play these games if you have not. Don't listen to the unpopular opinions about them and how they suck. They're lies. Not a huge fan of Apom, but I would shake its hand if it was offered to me. I always forget that Girafferig is a normal Pokemon as well. I think it's an underrated Pokemon for sure, and I appreciate it because of that. Also, its beta design is pretty cool. I did a solo run of Dunsparce before, and this Pokemon is the biggest derp of fun to use. Try it sometime. I love the fact it's based on Ursa Minor the Constellation. Shout out to Pokemon Channel for giving me that info. Ursa Ring is based off of Ursa Major. Shout out once again to Pokemon Channel for this knowledge. Those games were actually really cool back in the day. Porygon, but upgraded. Literally. I like Porygon 2 the most because of me being able to use Eviolite on it. That and I can get moves like Thunderbolt and Ice Beam for it as well. It comes in clutch so much for me. Stantler is what I like to call the butt frisbee Pokemon, but I like it. It made an appearance in Pikachu's Winter Vacation too, and I always liked how it pulled at Santa's sleigh. Smeargle is the Bob Ross of Pokemon, and I love it. It also has a variety of uses that make it such a situational Pokemon to have. Whitney makes this Pokemon a huge pain in the butt, but over the years, I realized you can just obtain a matcha from the Golden Round Department Store to make your life easier. I also like Miltek Shiny a lot, too. I don't think Chansey needed to evolve. I guess I do appreciate that Bulsey does have a cute design, though. This is the most annoying Pokemon to run into in Hoenn. I used to get so annoyed hearing its cry. Rang, rang. It appeared everywhere, and I was like, get off my screen. I like Linoon though, actually, but I hate getting swept by Normans though. Yeah, that happened in my Emerald Nuzlocke on Twitch last year, and I am super livid about that even today. I like Taylor, and Ash's one especially. It's got a cool design, and I love the fact that it has guts. Swallow also has a cool design. Who remembers Ash's Pikachu and Swallow though, and the Pokemon anime, and how I did that Super Saiyan Gold Fusion thingy? That was kind of cool, but dumb at the same time. Like, what the heck, Pokemon? I love it, but I hate its ability. Truant sucks. Vigoroth is dope. I have done a few playthroughs in Sapphire where I only kept it as a Vigoroth, and I actually enjoyed using it a lot. I didn't evolve it because I hate Truant so much. One of the most broken Pokemon is Slowking. Holy cow, is this Pokemon powerful as all heck. You know what sucks though? Truant. I actually don't like Whisburn that much. It's always just been kind of there for me. Hi, Billy Loudred here for the headphones. Loudred's alright, I guess. Hi, Billy Xplot here to explode your ears! Nah, I'm not gonna make your ears explode, don't worry. Once again, not a big fan of this Pokemon, but I like the jokes I can make with the Billy Maze comments. Rest in peace, man. I do not like Azuril. It's my least favorite of the baby Pokemon. It feels out of place to me compared to Pokemon like Elekid. This Pokemon is cute, but my god, it's terrible. I have a command over on my Twitch where we call Delcaddy bad, and it's funny to tease my girlfriend with it. Delcaddy is cute, but it's horrible in in-game playthroughs and competitive. Fun fact, actually, I did actually use a Delcaddy on my first playthrough of Alpha Sapphire, and it was a horrible decision, but it was also kind of fun, too. Spinda is super cute, and I love how there are so many unique forms and designs to this Pokemon. Also, once again, Mr. Dungeon makes Spinda cuter, too. I really like Swablo. It's a bird that has cloud for wings. I wish May would have gotten one in the Hoenn anime, though. That would have been really cool. I prefer Saviper over Zangoose, but I do, however, still like it. I would love to see a Mega Zangoose. This Pokemon looks like Peter Griffin's chin, that's all I'm gonna say. The Kecleon and Mr. Dungeon have made me terrified of them, but I do like the designs for them a lot. Starly is my favorite Route 1 baby bird. It's cute and has a lot of potential for its future evolutions. I like Staravia, but its cry on the anime was super irritating. Staravia! One of my favorite flying types is Staraptor. It's amazing to use in competitive, and I enjoy running Toy Scarf Reckless on this mod a lot. Its design also reminds me of the movie Top Gun. That's why I always nickname my Staraptor, Maverick. All you need to know is that this Pokemon is a god, NF said. Still a god, Pokemon. Don't question it. This was such a needed evolution for Apom for sure. Double hit Ambipom is an amazing thing. Baneri is adorable. Don's Baneri had the cutest crush on Pikachu, and I always found that so wholesome. I like Lop Honey, but don't look it up on Google Images. You have been warned. Even bigger waifu material, and I also warn you do not look it up on Google Images, is Mega Lop Honey, and this is my second favorite Mega Evolution. Mega Lop shreds if you give it return. The scrappy ability is also super clutch. Glam Meow is such a cute Pokemon. I like it a lot due to the fact that one of Dawn's rivals, Zoe, had one that she competed with regularly. However, I like Perugly a lot less due to Mars as in the Sinnoh games. It was just so annoying to deal with whenever I used to battle against her. Brock's Peeny was super strong for some odd reason, and I don't know why. I mean, it's cute, but I really don't get why. It's so freaking pat. Like, why it could lift up big giant rocks? It just never made sense to me. 
Chatot had the really cool ability of being able to record your voice and say it out loud into the game. I always found that super cool as a kid, but at the same time, um, some things were actually very bad to say. I love Munchlax in the anime and how it just eats everything in sight. A lot of protagonists own Munchlax in the anime seasons, and even now, Professor Burnett's Munchlax is still adorable. Lick Licky looks like Augustus Clute from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I like Porygon Z and its design. Toy Scarf is also really fun to run. The Pokedex entries lie. This Pokemon is god awful. Get off my screen, trash. It's God. Mayarkis, Blusher, Nuzlocks, and Shiny Luck. It looks like it's on drugs. I don't like this Pokemon either. It looks like it's on more drugs. I do appreciate it in Pokemon Super Mr. Dungeon, though. Lulepup is cute, and I love the potential its evolution line has. Herdy reminds me I need to go walk my dogs. Be right back. Statland is a fun Pokemon to use, and the access it has to the elemental fangs makes it super fun and viable. Statland in the Sun and Moon anime, though? Man, oh man. I still feel sad thinking about that one. I really don't like Odin, though. It's just an inferior version of Chansey, and I was super disappointed that they replaced Nurse Joy's Chansey with this stupid thing. And to make it worse, it was the only Pokemon from Unova to get a Mega Evolution. Why? You could have given the Mega to Kafagrigus, Drudigan, or pretty much any other Pokemon. But nope, they chose Odinno. And it isn't even good. Just get this thing away from me before I get even more upset. Minchino reminds me of a Snow White animal. It's just so happy and excited that it loves cleaning up dust with its tail. Chinchino is busted and competitive with its skill link ability. Tail slap choice span and you're set. That's also cute. Like I said last week, it's adorable and underrated. All of the forums are super cute as well. Sazbuck reminds me a lot of Bambi, one of my favorite Disney movies. Also, I have to say that all of its seasonal forums are super majestic. Bouffant's pretty nice. I have nothing bad to say about it. It also looked really cool in Detective Pikachu. Rufflet is definitely a cute little bird. I definitely like this line a lot more than the Mandibuzz line. One complaint that I do have, however, is that it takes forever to evolve this thing. Ah, uh, yes, the American Pokemon. How majestic. Braviary is definitely one of the best Pokemon to come out of the Unova region. Again, my only complaint with it is how late you have to wait to evolve it. Meloetta is one of the most interesting mythical Pokemon. It's based off of a singer and even has the aesthetics for one. Its dex entries also state that some famous songs were inspired by the melodies Meloetta plays. I think that's a pretty cool concept. I prefer this form of Meloetta. I can see Meloetta and Bialy from Oricorio dancing that away at like some kind of fancy ball or something. Bunnelby is super cute, and its evolution had so much potential. I like Clement's Bunnelby as well. What happened to you, dude? Digger Speed's design is just so ugh. Fletchling is okay. I tried finding one in my X and Y with Gale Wings, but was unaware that this was actually the hidden ability at the time. However, Big Pex wasn't all that bad to use in a playthrough, so I wasn't all that upset. Litleo is the perfect embodiment of a Lion Cup Pokemon, and that's all that needs to be said. Both the male and female forms look really cool. However, it's super sad that it ended up sucking and competitive. Not really King and Queen of the Jungle, huh? Furfur is a pretty awesome Pokemon. I love that it has 10 different unique styles it can have for its fur, as well as the reverse colors for its shiny. Definitely an underappreciated Pokemon in my book. I like Keoptel. It's a super cute Pokemon and the origins based off of his unique concept. I have talked about Heliosk a lot these past couple weeks. I mentioned I would love to see it have a poison type form branched evolution. A poison and electric evolution Pokemon would be super dope. Pikapek is pretty memorable, as it was technically the first Gen 7 Pokemon we ever got a glimpse of. I remember seeing many artists putting on their renditions of it, and some of them were really spot on. That was such a fun time to be a Pokemon fan. I love it being based on a teenage toucan, it's neat. One of my favorite birds is the toucan, and seeing a Pokemon finally based off of one makes me really happy. I love toucanon. It can also be deadly if you can get some hits off with the skill link and sheer force abilities. It's an underrated Pokemon, that's for sure. I'm pretty neutral on this line. However, when Young Goose was first revealed, everyone hilariously pointed out how much it reminded them of Donald Trump. And that comparison was even more accurate when we look at Gumshoes. I know the developers said that was just a coincidence, but I'm not convinced. It just looks too much like the guy. Come on, guys. Stuffle is so adorable. I love the way how it just flails around when it's trying to attack. Also, look at the little tag on its butt. It really is just such a cute teddy bear. Beware while also cute is a much deadlier teddy bear. It can easily kill you with a swipe of its paws or hug. On the same note, that's what I love about the one that travels of Team Rocket. It's just so intimidating, yet still protects and helps out Team Rocket all the time. It's a great Pokemon to see anytime it's in the anime. I like Oranguru. In the anime, there's one that has a little shack in the forest where people can go get drinks. This would have been a really cool location to have in the actual Sun and Moon games. Maybe it'll pop up in the Alola remix 10 years from now. I really like Type Null, and the concept that it is its evolution is its actual form awakened from trust with its trainer. To convey that concept better, they probably should have just made it a form based on the friendship level. However, this is cool nonetheless. 
Savelli is really the shining star though, being the original Pokemon that broke free from the device restraining its true powers. The whole origin of it being a Chimera and the theory that it was an attempt to recreate Arceus is just super amazing. I also love Gladians in the Pokemon anime. You can really see the bond the two have and it really just makes me love the two of them even more. Kamala is such an interesting Pokemon because it's born and dies perpetually asleep. It really makes you wonder how long this thing is even able to survive. Also, its shiny is pretty funny, being that its wood is what changes colors rather than the Pokemon itself. Although it really has some weird Pokemon, but I like that aspect a lot. Drumpa is awesome. He's a lovable, protective Snoop Dogg dragon, but while I do love Drumpa, I'll always still be disappointed that this Pokemon wasn't an evolution for Dunsparce. Maybe one day Dunsparce will get the love it deserves. Well, that wraps up my opinions on all the normal type Pokemon. These types are so viable, having access to a bunch of different attacks and with some stats to bring to the table. Most of the designs for this typing too are super adorable. What are your favorite normal types though? Let me know in the comments below as well as the typing you want me to cover next. As always, the typing with the most upvotes in the comments will be the one I cover next week. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content like Shiny Hunting, Showdown Battles, Explorers of Sky, Zelda, Fire Emblem, Smash Brothers, Borderlands, you name it, I play it. Want to support me further, further in Game Call Perks? Check out my Patreon. Dan Leone, Lady Crimson, Pal491, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Wizosted, and Sodden Grider did, and I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrian, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.